welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 horror books that I've read that I think would be great on the screen. So I grew up as a big horror fan. I watched horror movies from like, I don't know, probably the age of like five or six, my whole life. I've just always loved horror movies. Horror movies are my favorite to watch. I always get the most excited for horror movies, but I didn't start reading horror books until really last year. And as I've been reading these horror books, I have just been noticing ones that I would really, really love to watch as a horror movie because I'm such a horror movie fan. These books are just some of my favorite that I've read that have really cool horror elements that I think would be so nice to see in a movie or or maybe even a TV show, but like most of these probably a movie. So with that all being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. These are my top 10 horror books that I think need to be movies. These are also in no particular order. I'm just gonna go kind of random. The first book I'm gonna start with is Bunny by Mona Awad. This book is wild. This is a story about this woman who is in an MFA program. There's this clique of girls there in the program who call themselves Bunny. It's a term of endearment they use to each other. They're like, oh, Bunny, you're so silly, Bunny. What are you up to this weekend, Bunny? And our main character really doesn't like them, thinks they're really annoying, but also definitely has FOMO of not being included in this group that is like the cool girls in her MFA program. She does end up getting invited to do a smut salon with them where they read smutty romance books together and like drink and have a good time. And then she ends up getting pulled deeper in the group and they have some weird things going on. I don't wanna spoil what happens in this book because I really think it's just so fun to go in not really knowing what to expect and then to just be on this wild, weird adventure. But the particular things that happen in this book I think would be so, so cool to see in a movie and just see how it's done. Also with some plot elements at the end of the book when you start to learn some things that have been going on the whole time, I just think that in particular particular storyline is really conducive to a movie and if you've read the book you'll know what I mean by that. Overall I just think this book has a really cool atmosphere and aesthetic. I think it would be very similar to like Heather's which is just a classic and I think it would be a lot of fun to see on the screen especially with some of the crazy elements that happen in this book. Next, I'm going to talk about a newer book, and that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. And this is a story that is sort of like a pre-apocalyptic novel. So you follow this family who is going on vacation. They're staying in this Airbnb. It's a husband and a wife and their son and daughter. They're on vacation. They're at the beach. They're having a good time. And then one night, a couple knocks on the door. It is a black couple. The family that is staying there is white. This is a book heavily about race, so that's just why I'm calling those elements out. So this black couple knocks on the door and they say that, hey, this is our house actually that you're staying in. And there's been a sudden like blackout in New York City where we have our other place that we stay at when we rent this place out. So could we come in? We don't really have any place to go. We can't really get in the city. There's a whole citywide blackout. From there, the story is really about the dynamics of these two families in this home, in this very, very strange, eerie situation. There's a lot of speculation about what could possibly be going on in the world, why this would have happened and it really was very very timely to come out last year it felt very relevant coming out as we were in this weird part of 2020 where there's this pandemic sweeping the nation we didn't know how long it was gonna last I mean it's still lasting but it was very eerie and ominous at first and all the kind of conversations you're having about that and this book does a really nice job too of having deeper examinations of privilege and class and race all in this landscape and I just think this would be so excellent as a film it very much reminds me of this same kind of vibes of Get Out and like a Jordan Peele film. I think it would be so, so good. A lot of people have said this book is a little boring. It doesn't really feel like a lot's happening. And I think just the story of what's going on is just more conducive for a film. It would feel more eerie. Some of the imagery of the things that are happening in the world as like the world's responding to whatever it is that's going on would be really cool to see on screen. And I think overall it would just seem like a more interesting story on a screen than it did in a book. It's not a book about the apocalypse. It's not a post-apocalyptic story. It's like a pre-apocalyptic story. It's like what happens when the world starts to shut down and how do people react? And it's really about the people and the situation. So I think this would be a really, really cool one to see in a movie. <laughs> Next up, I have The Troop by Nick Cutter. This is a really 
gross horror book. And for people who like the really, really gross, gruesome elements of horror, I think you would love to see this one in a movie. I wouldn't really like to see some of the gross stuff in the movie, but I think that I would have enjoyed the story much more in a movie than I maybe did in the book. So this is a story about these Boy Scouts who are on this trip on this island, and one night this stranger arrives and he is just super, super hungry. He can't get enough food in him. And then he ends up causing this like outbreak on the island with all the boys. The boys are isolated and all alone on the island. So it sort of feels like like Lord of the Flies in that way. And you also get all these elements dispersed throughout the book of trying to figure out what was going on with that dude who initially came and caused this outbreak and like, what is it? You get like newspaper clippings and like science journal documents and stuff. So I think this would be really cool to have like a dual perspective movie where you're watching the scientist perspective of what's going on in these labs and why they're doing this like biomedical engineering and what was going on with this dude and how he got loose and you know understanding all of that but also just focusing in on the boys and their survival and isolation and fear and you know like that lord of the flies style of what do you do when you've got a bunch of kids alone and they're just trying to live and they don't have another option so i think this one would be a ton of fun to see on the screen i think it would be really cool to see both of those perspectives in the film i don't think that was done as well in the book of keeping that part of the story really alive i think I mean, me personally, I just kind of wanted to skim over that. I wasn't as, as interested in that, but I think in a movie, it would be really, really cool. Next up, I have The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This is a, another story about a family that is on a vacation. They're staying in this vacation home, really isolated. I think it's like in Canada, they're at this lake house no one's really around they're really far away the story focuses on this gay couple and their adopted daughter who are on this vacation and then these strangers arrive knocking on the door saying that the people need to let them in or else the world is going to end and they're super insistent on this they're telling the little girl they get to the little girl first and saying you know you've got to tell your dads to let us in or else the world's gonna end we're just trying to save you we're just trying to help you you've got to let them know that they have to let us in and it is so creepy I just think this beginning scene of the book where there's this little girl, she's outside, she's playing in the grass. It's like a very serene landscape. The dads are on the back deck. They're out. They can't even see the daughter. They're just admiring the water, talking about their vacation. They're glad to be away. And then you see these strangers eerily creep in and one of them comes to the girl and he squats down and he's talking to her. Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing to see on the screen. Like it felt like I was watching a movie as I was reading this one. I just think this is like a perfect screenplay. It would be so much fun. And and then also it's just such a cool element of is the world going to end or are these people just under some grand delusion like what's going on there and then the stakes are so high and it's so intense and you know I won't spoil what happens but it gets really intense and really fast paced and I just think it would be such a cool movie to see on the screen very much like a strangers or any of those films where people come in kind of reminds me of the purge a little bit in a way too so I think it'd be a ton of fun Next up, I have The Shadows by Alex North. This is kind of technically classified as a thriller, I guess. I'm just gonna include it in this list anyway because I would really love to see this on the screen and it does have some really great horror elements. So this is a story about a guy who is going back to his hometown 20 years later in his life. And when he was a child, he had this group of friends, this group of boys, and there was a main one, Charlie, who was convincing them all to lucid dream, telling them to visit the shadow man in their lucid dreams. Very weird, like cult vibes. And uh, that kid ended up murdering someone and it has been really famous in the news it's like this huge case and so our main character has just tried to separate himself from that over the past 20 years of his life but he's coming back now because his mom's dying and he wants to be there with his mom but when he gets back weird things start happening and there's like a copycat case going on but you don't know if it's like a copycat or something sort of paranormal going on this book has such cool creepy vibes there's a lot of like internet forum stuff like creepy pasta there's like slender man vibes there's these dark creepy forests there's the great division between things that happened in the past and what's going on now in the present and it's so mysterious and it's creepy kids and there's lucid dreaming and there's just so many good elements in here this would be so so good to see in a movie or even a tv show i just really want to see this adapted so so bad and i honestly just can't believe no one's picked it up yet because it would just be so perfect on the screen
Next up, I have Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshbeg. This is a more recent book that came out to last year, and I really think this would be so much better in a movie than it was in the book. I thought this book was so boring. It felt like nothing was happening, but I think it is eerie and ominous enough to be really, really good and captivating on the screen but just didn't really work in book form for me at least. So this is a book about this old woman who is living in this cabin alone in the woods, just her and her dog. Her husband has recently passed and she is still grieving him. So she's really lonely, really isolated. It's just her and her dog in the woods. And one day when she's on a walk with her dog in the woods, she finds this piece of paper that is laying in the woods. And the piece of paper says, her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body but there isn't a dead body there. And so she gets really curious, she picks up the note and then that just sends her on a tailspin adventure of trying to figure out, was there a Magda? Is there a dead body? Am I safe? Who killed this potential Magda? She's in this new town, so she's trying to like go to the library and figure it out and ask around for people to try to see who this could possibly be. She meets people who she suspects, which sounds really interesting, but something about the book, it was just so, so slow because it's less about the plot and more about the character and her isolation and her grief and her mental health along the way. So I think this would be really, really cool to see in a movie. It has very much like A24 vibes. So I think it'd be really cool in that kind of way, more like an artsy aesthetic horror film, less of, you know, like shocking and exciting, but I still do think it would be pretty good just on a movie, not really in the book. <laughs> Next up, I have Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This book would be so aesthetically pleasing to see on the screen. It is a classic Gothic vibe. It's got great detail down to the wallpaper that is in all of the rooms. It would be so beautiful to see on the screen and also just so fun and creepy. So like I said, this is your classic Gothic story. It follows this woman who receives a note from her cousin. This is also a historical. It's set back in like the 50s. So that would be really fun too but she receives this letter from her cousin who was recently married to this man and she's saying she doesn't feel safe i think she says that she thinks that he's poisoning her she's just like please help me come out i'm like stuck here i'm in a bad situation so she goes to visit her cousin but when she gets there the cousin is like ill in bed they're saying she has like tuberculosis or something like she's sick with something she was just delusional the family's kind of weird and sketch but the cousin's like yeah, I'm just sick, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I was just sick in bed, but like, I'm glad to see you, nice to have you here. But our main character is like, something seems suspicious. And so she sticks around for a while, she gets to know these people, and she tries to figure out if her cousin is safe or not and what's going on in the house. And the ending of this book, oh my gosh, I wanna see on the screen so, so bad. There's so many weird things that happen in this book. I, If you've heard about this book, I'm sure you've heard something to do with mushrooms. And yeah, I just want to see that in a movie. I think it would be so good, so aesthetic, so creepy, so fun. I think this has actually been picked up for like a TV show or something now that I think about it. So I'm going to have to investigate that. But I hope that's true because it would be so, so cool to see. Next up, I have a short one, and that is Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This is just a little short novella about this group of kids who like to play pranks on each other, and they do so with this mannequin that they have. They had him a couple years ago where they used to play with him and prank around with him, and they just thought like, oh, let's pull out Manny again, they call him Manny, and play this prank on our friend who works at the movie theater. And so they go to pull this prank, they have the mannequin like all set up in the theater. They're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so funny when they come around to look at tickets, and like, haha, it's a mannequin sitting there. But things start playing out they go by the dude passes the tickets and they're all watching as he goes by the mannequin I think it's gonna be so funny it's just like kid stuff you know but when the ticket guy goes past the mannequin he just goes on like there's no problem like nothing is unusual and they're like that's strange but maybe he's playing us we don't know and then the mannequin gets up and leaves like walks away and they're like oh shoot and then this mannequin might have come to life and uh, might be out for vengeance and try and kill them all so it is so so fun so fast paced I think this would be really fun probably not as a full length movie but just like you know an episode of Black Mirror or something fun where you could just do one little quick episode of this mannequin coming to life slasher film I think it would be so cool and so fun and also, if you haven't read this yet, please do. It's so much fun. I just can't recommend it enough.
Next up, this is going to be a sort of unexpected recommendation to include in this video, but I just read this book and I love it a lot, so I have to bring it up. And that is What Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. This is a YA horror book that just recently came out this year and it is incredible to me. It is so weird. It is the weirdest YA I've ever read, but it is so amazing, so fun. The aesthetic would be so cool. And I just, I have to see this played out on screen at some point. Like if no one else is gonna do it, I'll make it because I love this so much. So this book follows a girl who was sent away from her family eight years ago to go to this boarding school. There was some kind of incident, but you don't really know what it was. You just know she was sent away. But now she's had an incident at boarding school. And so she's getting sent back home with her family. So she comes back to her family where her grandmother, her grandfather, her mom, her dad, her sister, and her male cousin all live. And she doesn't really have like a lot of memories of what life was like with them before. So it's really vague in that sense. And once she's coming back, she's trying to get reacclimated with the family. There's like some weird tension there sort of between especially her and her grandmother because her grandmother is the one who sent her away. Oh yeah, and I should mention her family is like all monsters pretty much <laughs> if you couldn't get that from the cover of this book there's like werewolves there's some other creatures going on there's this other guy who visits the family as their accountant who definitely has some weird things going on with him and i would love to tell you so much more about this book and why i love it but i really don't want to spoil it because i just think it's such a cool fun adventure to just read this book and try to piece all the pieces together this is one i'll definitely be rereading over and over again which is not something i typically do with ya but i have just been looking for a a really really weird book to pull me in and this is it it definitely has like the Adams family type vibes so if you like that I think you'll really like this and I also think that is why it would be so good on the screen because you've got monsters you've got weird family stuff going on you've got the woods it would just be so fun <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, I don't know how this book has not been made into a movie already. And that is House of Leaves. This is such a classic for horror fans. If you love horror books and you haven't read House of Leaves yet, you probably feel like you're really missing out because people talk about it so much. They hype it up as one of the scariest horror books of all time. And it's really intimidating to people because it's really long. It's like seven or 800 pages. It's a really unusual format book where it's not just your normal story. There's some pages that you have to turn sideways. There's some pages that are to be read like in a mirror. You're seeing here, there's like braille on this page. So it's very, very unusual. And you don't read it straightforward. You flip around to certain footnotes and stuff to get the whole story. If you're interested in this book, but you're too intimidated to read it, lucky for you, I have an entire reading vlog dedicated to reading this book where I talk a lot about my experience reading the book, if I think it's worth reading, not really, and answers some like common discussion questions about it. So definitely go check that video out if you're interested in this, but you don't really wanna read it for yourself. But the reason I think this would be so perfect for a movie, and I cannot believe no one has ever made this into a movie, is because it's a lot of found footage. Like this half the book is just you reading kind of like a script for found footage videotapes. So it would literally be perfect for film. What this book is really about is so hard to explain. And I do a really good job. Well, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I do a better job of explaining it in my video dedicated to this book and my whole reading vlog. It's just hard to explain briefly because it's like a book within a book within a book, kind of. But essentially a lot of the story that you're following in this book is about this family who moves into this house and the dude is like a videographer. And so he sets up all these cameras in the house because he wants to capture like the American experience of moving into a home with your family and settling out. But then really weird, like supernatural things start going on in the house, like not just ghosts, like real weird supernatural stuff. Then it becomes this like sensation because these tapes have been found because this is really a story about finding these papers, but it's really a story about a guy who finds these papers that a guy has assembled and all this research, but does it even exist about this movie that doesn't even really exist in the world of this book? Like I said, super difficult to explain, but tons of found footage material in here. That would be so, so cool. The basic premise of like the weird stuff that goes on in the house is they find this door that wasn't there and then they open it and it's like a closet and they're like, that's weird. This wasn't here when we moved into the house, we're pretty sure. And then it starts like growing and it turns into a hallway and then it turns into a whole room and then it turns into this 
huge like house sized space that's just really dark and really cold and it changes a lot and the videographer wants to explore it a lot he wants to understand it but his wife doesn't she's like we should just leave that alone this is weird what's going on so yeah i just think that would be so so cool to see in a movie and it's really such a shame that no one has done that yet with this book so these are all of my top 10 horror books that i think should be films they would be so cool to see on the screen, so scary, so aesthetic, so fun, such a good time. If any movie producers are watching this, I doubt it, but here you go, here's some material. Go make these into movies, because they'll be really fun to watch. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you agree, if you do think they should be movies, or if you don't, if you think any of them would be terrible to see on the screen. Also let me know if you have any favorite horror books that you've read that I didn't include on my list that you think would be super cool to see as a movie. I love this vibe in horror books. When I feel like they could be a movie, that's when I really love a horror book more. Because like I said, I was such a horror movie kid growing up. Like that is just what I'm most accustomed to in the genre. So as I'm finding more horror books to read, I really like the ones that kind of feel like a horror movie. Those are just more fun for me. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.